This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. We are learning new details about a triple shooting in Oakville that killed two people tonight. A father tells us the victims were teenagers and friends. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. The shooting happened just before two on Monday afternoon at the Black Forest Department Complex. That's near Chalet Hill Drive in Oakville. Our Annie Crawl is live in the neighborhood with the latest. Annie. Well, exactly, Mike. In fact, police have now identified one of those boys who died as 15 year old Colin Courtright. In fact, he passed away on the scene just behind me. But now police are also telling us tonight they have three suspects in custody who are in connection to this shooting. Now, this all happened starting at about 1.50 on Monday afternoon when police found three people wounded near the Black Forest apartment complex. St. Louis County Police have not yet identified the second person who was killed, but Colin Courtright's father, Sam Starnes, told me just today he was a teenager who was friends with his son. Starnes says he lives with his son in Lime. We, he left for the casino Monday for just a few hours, and Colin asked if he could have a friend over, Starnes saying sure. He's not sure, though, why they went to the Black Forest Apartments, and he's still trying to wrap his head around losing his son. Yeah, he just, he's, he's got so much family and, you know, there's so many friends that, that love him and, you know, I, I just don't believe, you know, I, till right now, we're, we're sitting there talking, I don't believe it, you know, it's like I'm sleeping. Now, Colin's friend who was shot died on his way to the hospital. That third victim who was shot survived and is now recovering at the hospital. Again, police are telling us they have those three suspects in custody and they are going to try and figure out exactly what happened. For now, though, reporting live in Oakville, Annie Crawl, five on your side. Two people have life threatening injuries after a shooting in East St. Louis. It happened around one this afternoon outside Pops Liquor Store that's on Bond Avenue. Illinois State Police say a man and woman were sitting in a car with a five month old baby. Someone in another car drove by and fired shots, hitting both adults. They say the child was taken to the hospital, but police don't think his injuries are from gunfire. Police have not said if they have a suspect. Right now, the city of New Haven, Missouri is without a police department after its chief resigned. New Haven is about an hour away from downtown St. Louis in Franklin County. Our Justina Cornell was in New Haven today and she joined us from the newsroom with what she's learned about all this. Justina? Well, Mike, New Haven Police Chief John Halquist was just sworn in January 8th and then resigned on January 31st. He said he stepped down because of circumstances surrounding the department and the information discovered, which he did not know about prior to his appointment. Now, he continued to say he loves the town, but quote, because of what I know now, I have no further desire to be associated with the New Haven Police Department in any capacity, end quote. Following the announcement, the city held a special meeting Friday. The Board of Aldermen decided to disband the entire police department and enter into a six month contract with the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. Now that agency is also conducting an audit on the police department. The New Haven City Administrator tells me they were shocked by the sudden news. His resignation letter basically brought up some concerns regarding the evidence, uh, proper handling of the evidence um, room. We will get through this and we will be Back to New Haven. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office has already started assigning deputies to New Haven. There will be a city board meeting on February 12th to discuss what's next, and I'm told they expect a big crowd. A campaign to legalize abortion in Missouri is underway. The Missourians for Constitutional Freedom has started collecting signatures to get its petition on the ballot. It needs more than 170,000 signatures by the 5th of May. Today, the group is hosting events across the state. There's an event to collect signatures in about an hour in St. Louis. This is at the pageant on Del Mar from 6 to 730. There's a new candidate in the race for Missouri's first congressional district. Former Missouri representative and Senator Maria Chappelle Nadal is running. Chappelle Nadal has been criticized in the past for posting some controversial statements online. She recently received a $77,000 settlement with St. Louis County. That was after Councilwoman Rita Heard Days dismissed her because of her social media posts. She's in the running along with St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell and the current Congresswoman Cori Bush. 
There's a huge debate among city leaders about how to split 28 pots of money. The cash would be earmarked for new city streets, sidewalks, or other infrastructure repairs. But first, aldermen in the city's new 14 wards have to figure out how to spend it. As our political editor Mark Maxwell reports, that process can hit a few snags along the way. He's live downtown tonight. Yeah, Kelly and Mike, I'll give you one example. 20 years ago, these ward capital funds sat dormant for so long, they accrued more than three and a half million dollars in interest alone. Now, the city is dividing up all that old money plus interest and the new funds that go out every year to each of these new wards. But the old systems, the old problems in the system, still bog down a city that has a long list of deferred maintenance. When it comes to repairing streets in St. Louis, how money moves is confusing. There are more than a few speed bumps along the way. It could be weeks, it could be a month, it might be a two month period. It doesn't take months, it's taking years. That's Board of Public Service President Rich Bradley taking heat from aldermen who hear regular complaints from inpatient voters. Someone who's one of our constituents just waiting for their speed hump to get finished. Some homeowners desperate for new sidewalks even put up half the money themselves only to wait on the city. Three, four, five years for their replacement. This is old city government. This is the way the process is written in law in the charter. In some cases, the delays are etched in the city's founding documents. At the end of the day, we have to follow the charter as far as how we bid our contracts. In others, the delays could be stuck in someone's inbox. Well, many times what happens is, is someone sends an email and they say, I would like to do a project and we give them information, but we never get a full sign off. Hey, could I hear you right that some of these projects might have died in an email thread? That's correct. Now, a smaller board with 14 so wards is splitting up 28 pots of money. What's at stake if they can get that money out the door? The paving is big on my wish list. That's a really big thing to, that I want to see uh, more of all over the city and especially in Ward 1. The only thing standing in the way is a lot of red tape. But after that, it's not the alderman out there with a shovel uh, and a hard hat, although sometimes I think I'd be more effective if I, if I did that. And some of the frustrations that often hold many of these projects back, the red tape, if you call it, are for good reasons. Like you want the competitive bidding process so you can get the lowest bid, or you want to make sure that you're not just putting uh, concrete in a pothole now, only to have a big project to fix the street later on down the road. Live downtown, Mark Maxwell, five on your side. St. Louisans have weighed in on how the city should spend money from the Rams settlement. The top choice was to replace water mains in the city. Second pick, redesign St. Louis streets. People also want to see a pay raise for city workers and free or subsidized child care. $280 million is going to the city. $30 million will be used to expand the Dome and America Center. This spring, the Board of Aldermen will decide which changes are possible and how much they would cost. Backing away from a bipartisan deal, why Democrats say Republicans no longer support the border bill. Looking to save big, which products Consumer Reports says are on sale this month? And looking at the sky now, and Arnold, a little bit of cloud cover streaming in. Uh, 141 and 55 looking really good. Started out this morning in the 20s, and we made it almost to 60. More on our forecast coming up.